Hey, it's Mike from the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure Channel. Welcome back to the channel. Logan's my truck. The Hobo's my trailer. They are best friends forever. Uh, Amber and I are sneaking out for a weekend getaway. Logan and the Hobo. Best friends forever. Amber had a business trip up in Northern California. Uh, on, she's got a meeting to go to on Saturday. So we've been up there a couple times before for this trip. We kind of make a little couples weekend out of it. Usually we just get a hotel, fly up and get a hotel. And we thought, well, it's kind of a hassle to fly up there. Why don't we drive up there? We'll sleep early in the morning. And then that turned into, why don't we take the trailer up there instead of getting a hotel and leave early in the morning. And that turned into, why don't we take the trailer up there and leave tonight? So we're leaving tonight and I'm tired. I worked all week, I worked all day today. Came home, got off just a little bit early, came home, started hooking everything up. So we're just gonna hook it up and bail out it's snowing over the uh, grapevine right now, the kind of the mountain pass on the five that separates Northern California and Southern California. And the highway patrol is doing, uh, they're not doing chain control, but they are slowing down traffic. So hopefully by the time we leave, traffic has died down and I don't have to sit in traffic for a long time. I'll let you know. So we did make it out of LA and over the pass without any snow problems. We left at about 7 p.m. and arrived at a rest area at about 10 p.m. Uh, we had never stayed at a rest area before, so we were curious to see how well it worked, and we were both really pleasantly surprised with uh, how well it worked out. And then the next day we got an early start, and we arrived at our destination in Northern California, and it was a beautiful day. So while Amber was at her meeting all day, I was just footloose and fancy free, did what I wanted to do. Uh, got outside, it was a beautiful day. I went for a nice run. I uh, got some projects done on the trailer, a couple things that were on my list of things to do that I just hadn't gotten around to doing yet, just some little stuff. Uh, got to watch a couple movies and just relax, and it was a really enjoyable day. I was really thinking a lot about what I wanted to communicate with this video, uh, kind of the main theme I was thinking about. and. Really, it's the travel style, and since it was just Amber and I traveling without the kids this time, we were able to travel a little bit differently than we normally do. And what I mean by that is um, we were able to leave late at night. We were able to drive late into the night, and then we just stopped at a rest stop, which we had never done before. And we just, you know, got out of the truck, got into the trailer, got in bed, you know, brushed our teeth, got in bed, slept for, you know, six, seven, eight hours, got up, made some coffee, and then hit the road again. And it was fantastic. And... Uh, it really helped us to avoid some bad weather um, on the pass. Uh, it, it helped us avoid getting stuck in snow, which was good. And so the last point I'd like to make on that is just be aware of the weather conditions, not only where you are, but along all the way along your route and at your destination and try to avoid possibly bad uh, weather situations. So I'm just getting the trailer packed up. Amber's in a, another meeting today. She was in a meeting all day yesterday. Uh, she's in a shorter one today here in the afternoon. Uh, as soon as she gets on with the meeting, we're going to hit the road. We're trying to beat a snowstorm. We want to get uh, across the pass, the grapevine that separates Central California and Southern California before the snow hits. So uh, the snow is going to start there at about 8 a.m. tomorrow. So we're going to try to do the bulk of the driving tonight and then get up early and hit the pass before 8 tomorrow. So anyway, just getting the trailer all loaded up and uh, we're going to hit the road tonight.
So I had the uh, I had the gray tank for the shower open uh, while we were camping so we could take showers without worrying about the tank filling up. And I had, I dropped this piece of line right here, the sewer line, so water would build up in there, kind of act like a P-trap and block sewer gases from coming back in the open gray tank valve. And then I just took a shower right before I started packing up and I closed the valve before that so there'd be some water build up in the gray tank and I did some dishes so there's, we have two gray tanks. So I did some dishes so there'd be some water in the other gray tank. That way I have uh, relatively clean water to flush the sewer line after I dump the black tank. So I dump the black tank and then I dump the two grays and that gray water kind of cleans out the, the sewer line so it's not all nasty when I go to put it away. You can leave the gray line, the gray tank line open like that if you're connected. Don't ever leave the black tank open like that. The black tank needs to be closed and it needs the volume of water in there to build up so that you don't just get an accum accumulation of solid waste building up in the bottom of the tank. So it needs to be full of, of liquid, the, the black tank, to work properly, otherwise you're gonna have a big problem. So don't ever, under any circumstances, leave the black tank open. <laughs> We're gonna be on the road tonight just staying at a rest stop and so um, the fresh water tank's empty right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in there, bring it up to like a third of the tank so that we have water tonight uh, before we go to sleep and in the morning. I keep all my water supplies in this tote and included in that is this little spout. It screws on the end of the hose and then it pops into the gravity fill port on the trailer. Works good. Here's the best tip I can give you for maintaining the bottom of your slide before you put your slide in. You want to sweep uh, real good underneath the lip of the slide to make sure there's no little pieces of sand or small rocks or whatever. Because when that slide, slide comes in, it's rubbing on the bottom and it could catch one of those little tiny rocks and it'll put a scratch on your floor and it'll also could tear the, uh, I've got, uh, what's it called? It's going to ruin the whole dang shot. Anyway, I've got like the tarp, tarp like material on the bottom of the slide and if that rips, then the slide's not waterproof anymore on the bottom. Darko. It's called Darko. Turned out to be the theme for this trip was leaving in the evening to try to avoid uh, snow on the pass because that's what we did on the way home too. We left about six or seven in the evening. I can't remember which one. Uh, and it worked out good. There's a little bit of traffic going through uh, Sacramento when we were traveling through Sacramento to get to the five to come south. And we did hit a, hit a couple of pockets of rain, but it wasn't too bad. All in all, it was a good trip. We drove for uh, about five or six hours and got to just north of the grapevine to a rest stop and we stayed the night at the rest stop again. On the way back home, we stopped again at the rest area, the same rest area actually, except this time, this time on the southbound side of the freeway. Turns out we really enjoy staying in the rest areas. It wouldn't work if we had the kids, but it definitely works for just 
Amber and I, the complaints I've heard about staying in rest areas is it's kind of noisy, you get a lot of traffic noise, and then sometimes you're parked next to a big rig and the big rig's running its generator or its engine all night or whatever, and that happened to us, but uh, I guess it just doesn't really bother us that much. And so uh, we enjoyed our time in the rest areas. We definitely felt like we were crushing it on this trip. We were avoiding the weather, we were avoiding the snowstorms, we were sleeping in rest areas, we were doing 400 miles in two days on the way up, 400 miles in two days on the way back. Uh, it was awesome. We did make it onto the pass and over the pass, the grapevine before the snowstorm hit. We did drive through some heavy pockets of rain, but we didn't encounter any snow, uh, which was good because once the snow started, eventually they shut the grapevine down. And if we had been stuck and not been able to get over the grapevine, it would have really created a logistical nightmare for us. So we made it home safe and sound. That was a whirlwind trip. We did over 800 miles in four days. It was really nice having the trailer with us. I enjoy staying in the trailer. It was cheaper than flying. Uh, doesn't take that much longer than flying when you figure in you know driving to the airport and then waiting around at the airport and getting through security and getting to the rental car place and rental car etc etc you know that all that time adds up too so it didn't really take that much more time plus it's a lot more convenient just to be in your own vehicle and have your own stuff uh we were able to avoid the weather at least the the worst parts of the weather which was good and uh it was a great trip so Thanks for watching another episode of the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure Channel Show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give me the thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. And uh, we'll see you again in the next video.